Hello guys, this is PanzerMeister36. In today's video, we are going to be looking at how I built, painted, and weathered this diorama for my Panzer III Buddy Build project I recently completed with Hamilcar Barkas. This diorama is meant to represent my Panzer III at the Battle of the Salient at Jerbrook in 1941 in North Africa. And as you can see, I've got some nice scenery going on here. I haven't done anything crazy because I have not built a diorama in four years. So I'm trying to keep things pretty straightforward today, and hopefully some of you guys are going to learn something new, maybe get some ideas or inspiration for building your own dioramas. All in all, I think the diorama came out very well in the end, as you can see here. It's pretty awesome. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Now, let's get started. For a nice strong base, I started off with this painting board, 7 by 9 inches, and I think it's a perfect size for my Panzer III here. It's not very very small but it still has enough space around the outside so I can have some nice scenery. I was originally planning to kind of like key the foam into the inside of it as you see here but that's kind of overkill I think so in the end I just went with gluing the foam onto the flat back side of it. I'm going to use this pink insulation foam for the main scenery. This is something I have left over from my model routing days because we love to use it for that since this stuff is excellent, it's high density and it's strong, but you can also cut it very easily. And I'm just going to glue it onto the wood with some random wood glue I had. There's probably better stuff you can use, but this worked fine. I spread the glue out in an even layer, fairly even. And then I placed my foam base on there. I think the foam is about 1.5 inches thick. Then of course we applied some weight with all of my beautiful Stug 3 books. <laughs> and then I left this to sit overnight and dry. Next morning it was nicely glued in place, not going to come off at all. So we can start planning out the actual diorama scenery now. I want my Panzer 3 to be kind of coming over a little bit of a rise. Something sort of like this. So, you know, it's a little bit more dynamic that way with the tank going up. So I'm going to kind of measure how much I need to cut down into the diorama. And then we're going to start to roughly chop this up. You can buy some fancy hot wire metal, like uh, foam cutting machines and tools. I don't have any, so I'm just using a box cutter. It works pretty well. Uh, but it's not exactly the most precise way to do it, I guess. So that gave me the back side of the hill that I was looking for, and it looks pretty nice. Fits the tank well. So for the small cliff face here at the edge of the river, I'm going to take a little bit of extra foam and glue it on in the rough shape that I'm looking for. We're going to smooth this out later with some sculpting materials. There we go. That's much better. Looks more interesting, and our tank is nicely in cover. So it seems a little bit more fitting. I was originally going to use this DAS modeling clay, which is super cheap, to sculpt the terrain, but it does not stick at all to foam. So I went with plan two, which is sculpt a mold. This is excellent. It's once again stuff I have left over from my model routing days. It's like this weird paste. It's almost like half plaster of Paris and half paper mache because it's much like plaster but it's also kind of fibrous. It's really really good for sculpting terrain like this. You simply thin it down with a little bit of water, mix it up in a cup, and then it goes on as this nice thin paste that gives a good texture for the rest of our senior materials to cling on to. You can see here I'm using my sculpta mold to emphasize the high water mark at the edge of the river basin here. Just making some little cliff face kind of things. Once it was mostly dry, a couple hours, I pressed the tank into the diorama very gently so that we would get some track marks and so that it would better fit the terrain. 
and I used the back end of some tweezers to make the track pattern continue past the end of the tank. All right, now I took some 150 grit sandpaper and I was planning to smooth this out so it was nice and smooth because most of this is gonna be kind of sandy. I don't want this quite heavy texture that we have right now, but this stuff takes a long time to sand, like a long time. I spent hours and I got really nowhere. So I went back to the modeling clay that I had before and I used this to apply a thin layer on all the areas where I wanted my sandy texture. This is a very thin layer I'm applying. I'm really just trying to smooth it out. I can use a little bit of water to kind of blend this stuff down and get it nice and flat. So clearly this stuff works pretty well when it's sticking onto sculpta mold, but it doesn't work on foam because the foam I guess is way too smooth. After everything had dried, I took my box cutter blade and carefully hacked away any of the material that was hanging over the edges of the foam. I want a nice smooth edge to my diorama. Also remember to always cut towards yourselves, kids. For the edge plates, I'm going to use this sheet styrene I have on hand because it's the only thing I have. I would have preferred to use maybe like balsa wood or something, but I don't have any, so this stuff works well enough. I trace out the edge of the diorama, and then you see here I'm just using a small craft knife to carefully trace that out, you know, as close as I can get, and then I get a nice edge plate. Looks pretty good. And then I also attach this with the wood glue. Again, there's probably better things out there for this, but this seemed to work well enough. I glued the edges together using some Tammy Extra Thin Cement to weld them so that there was no more gaps. And then I took a sanding sponge of about 2000 grit and I just rounded out the edges and made it look a little bit more finished. I rolled some small noodles of my clay again and I used this to fill any small gaps that existed between the edges of the diorama and my side plates. After the clay dried, I did a little bit of trimming once again, and also a little bit of sanding to smooth them out so it was nice and finished along the sides. To make my cracked riverbed effect, I bought some of this Golden Brand Crackle Paste at my local art store. This is an acrylic gel-like medium that looks a lot like Cool Whip, but I would not recommend tasting it. When you apply this, you let it sit for a couple of hours and as it dries it'll slowly begin to crack. Now depending on how thick you apply it you'll get larger cracks. So I tried to keep this very thin because I want these to look fairly in scale. The paste spreads pretty nicely though in some areas it was a little bit difficult for it to be super smooth so I took a little bit of water on my finger and I can actually blend it out fairly easily. The cracks begin almost immediately but you have to wait a couple of hours before it fully cracks as you can see here. Now they recommend waiting at least three days which is what I did um, but towards the end maybe after about 24 hours I took the back end of my tweezers and did some tapping along the areas where the tank would have driven and this broke up the chunks into smaller pieces. I wanted smaller chunks there because the tank of course would have done some damage to the riverbed effect and uh, this actually worked very well, but I recommend doing this before it's completely dry, otherwise the chunks are going to fall off. So like I said, I waited three days before I did anything else, and by that point everything was nice and dry and it looks really awesome. I want to base paint everything with black, so I'm going to use Tammy XF69 NATO Black. I thinned it with lacquer thinner and I'm spraying it on at like 20 psi. I'm just going for an overall base coat. To unify everything to a black finish and also paint the sides because I want the nice black edge there. With everything nicely unified I masked off the edges and I grabbed some hairspray 
I'm going to use this as adhesive for the next steps. I have some small, finely sifted dirt and some smaller rocks and also some larger rocks. We're going to apply these to make some nice texture. The finely sifted dirt I'm going to use to simulate the sand. Uh, the, the desert around Tobruk isn't rolling sand dunes. It's more of like a rocky wasteland. So it's not super fine sand. There are some rocks and chunks and stuff like that. So I think that the materials I have here are pretty good for what I'm going for. I have some reference photos of the deserts I'm going for on my Facebook page if you want to see. So I'm going to glue everything on with a couple of thin mists of hairspray because it works very well for adhering sand and stuff. And then I also applied some more details afterwards with super glue, such as some riverbed debris and some tufts and so on. Along the eroded cliff face here, I glued on some small bits of root that I had in my garden. And these are actually going to be simulating some roots from the plants I'm going to be applying along the cliff face here. I think this is good for emphasizing the areas that are kind of like washed away here. With everything in place, I'm going to take some Tammy XF92 and apply an overall brown coat to once again unify everything to the same color. Currently we have gray and brown and black and I want everything to look sandy so I'm going to spray it over with this base coat. Next up, Tammy XF79 is going to be used to paint some highlights such as on the, the cracked riverbed down here, make it look more dusty and dry on the cliff face and as well as just some other random areas to make some variation. Also repeated this with some AK Real Color RAL 7027. Same thing here, just airbrushing some random highlights. The result of these airbrush coats gave me a good color that I liked and that I found matched the tank very well, which is always good. So this is good for our scenery and our base color, but I think we want to add some more life to the diorama. For that, I'm going to gather some roots from my garden here, just random roots and I can clip off some small sections that I think look nice for little shrubs. And I will punch small holes with a skewer here and I'm going to glue these small roots in using a little bit of white glue. Again, the diorama here is not simulating the sandy, barren wasteland of the, of the main Sahara you think of. There are areas that are more rocky and that actually see some rain and water. And especially in the areas around the north edge of the African deserts where they actually were fighting because there's, you know, water. There is actual plant life and stuff, so this isn't out of place and this is more like the actual kind of deserts that these tanks fought in. I had a second set of roots here which you can see are a little bit darker than the previous ones I applied. And I think that for these, I'm going to make them look like they're a little bit more lively. So instead of applying them without any foliage, I'm going to actually give them a little bit of greenery with some of this Woodland Scenics Fine Turf. This is the color Earth, which I think is good for desert life because it's not that bright green. It's a much more muted brownish green color. I gave the roots a little misting of hairspray, which serves as an adhesive. And then I applied the turf by sticking the root into my little bowl here. And then also sprinkling it over the rest of the root. It's actually very easy and the results are not that bad at all as you can see right here. I think that looks not too bad at all. Half decent, I guess. I made a couple more of these roots the same way. It's actually very quick. It only took me maybe half an hour to make a dozen or so of these little guys. You can buy store-bought fancy modeling bushes and stuff like that, but they're not cheap. This is almost free. I just had stuff lying around for this. I stuck these roots in the exact same way as the previous ones, just punching a small hole with a skewer because then they won't fall over. And then I glue them in with a little bit of white glue. You can probably also use super glue or anything else. I just like white glue because it doesn't dry shiny. I made sure to place a couple of the roots under the tracks to make the tank look like it's actually interacting with the diorama scenery. And then the rest of these green bushes, I applied them closer to the base of the river. Reason being, I think that it would make more sense to have the actual living looking plants with the greenery on them 
closer to the actual base of the river basin. And then of course the more uh, dead looking bushes we looked at applying previously, those are applied further and further up the hill where the river basin would be less damp. With the scenery in place, all that was left was to remove the masking tape, paint a couple of small touch-ups where my masking removed some of the base paint we applied previously, and then of course I took some of these little soft felt pads that I have for, I don't know, furniture I guess, and I stuck them on the edges of my diorama base here so that it sits nicely on any surface and also the edges aren't going to get torn off. Then I mounted the tank in place. And there we go, we're all done. Here is the result of my fairly basic Panzer III diorama. You might want to call it a vignette or a base or whatever because it doesn't, I don't know, tell a story or have four figures or whatever the IPMS rules say. But whatever, it's a diorama, it doesn't really matter. And I had a lot of fun making it. Like I said before in the beginning, I didn't do anything too crazy today because I have not done one of these in a long time but I had a lot of fun and the results I think look pretty nice. My shrubbery and my scenery textures all are very convincing and I think they're realistic and they show a nice scene of my dried up riverbed with some plant life in it that slowly fades from green at the base up into more dead stuff towards the cliff face above. Anyways, as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and maybe learned something new. If you have any questions or comments, please post them on below. I always read through them all. And if you have any uh, recommendations for tips for me, that would really help me out because I want to do more of these dioramas soon in the coming months for some other projects I've got coming up. I also have tutorials on painting the figure and also painting and weathering the Panzer III on this diorama as well. So I will link those on screen for you now. As always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Those guys really help me buy the paints and products that you guys see in these videos. If you can support me, please consider it. It really helps me out. As always, I'll see you guys next time. Until then, goodbye and happy mauling.